Hey everyone, I'm gonna show you how I created this sun glow effect in my recent oil painting. I see a lot of sunset paintings looking like this, and I wanted to try a different approach. Now, my friend Matt proposed to Mara during a sunset in Hawaii, and their wedding was coming up, and he wanted to surprise her with a painting to hang in their new home together. But the painting that he wanted was something that I've never done before. He asked me to turn this photo of these intertwining trees into a sunset. This means that the entire lighting scenario would change. Now that might sound easy in theory, but let me explain how I make paintings. If someone asked you to paint a tree, what would you start with? A tree trunk, some roots, a bunch of leaves? Well, there's a more straightforward way. You see, artists in the Renaissance had a major breakthrough when they began to use light and shadow. The light falls on everything, trees, people, clothes, so if someone asked a Renaissance artist to paint a tree, they wouldn't paint a tree trunk, roots, and leaves. They would paint the light and shadow to look like a tree, right? This is tapping into the deeper fundamentals because everything that we see is just light entering our eyes and by it we distinguish one object from another. It's a different way of thinking, but the implications are huge because if I'm really good at painting trees, I might be awful at painting people. But if I'm really good at painting light, I can paint anything. So when Matt asked me to turn this daytime scene into a sunset, I had to step back and really consider this. Now, with the sun setting directly on the other side of the trees, that would put all of the trees in shadow, like a silhouette. So I could paint a nice sunset in the back and have all the trees painted in one color. But when I'm looking at a sunset in person, there's more to it than that. There's this glow that feels like a warm embrace. A black tree and a red sky doesn't capture that feeling. And then I saw this. That warm glow went straight to my heart. Look at how the sun is both behind and in front of them. That's what I wanted in my painting. So I decided I would somehow combine this setting with this lighting. I created a mock-up and sent it to Matt. Then I stretched my canvas did a transfer sketch, and I toned the canvas in a burnt orange color because I decided to paint the glow of the sun first. I painted a circular gradient all the way to the outer edges of the trees. I'll be honest, I was feeling a little doubtful that this would work. Conventional wisdom might say to paint the sky and the trees and then add a glow on top of it, but it just didn't sit right with me. The light would have been an afterthought. That's not to say it couldn't be done this way, but it would have been more work and probably not any better for it. The trees don't affect the light, the light affects the trees. And because the light is paramount, I wanted the glow to be as colorful as possible. Toning the canvas orange and painting the glow first would give me the most vivid colors. So after my gradient, I scrubbed in basic colors for the sky and I intentionally kept everything soft, kind of like looking through a foggy window. I wanted to capture the overall impression carefully assessing the relationships of my values and my colors. Here I noticed that my sand was a little too bright in relation to the glow of the sun, so I added a darker value. And that's my first pass. In the second pass, I painted the sky around the trees to create the impression of them. Again, I'm not painting trees, I'm painting value, edge, and color. We'll talk more about those later, but you can see that I'm essentially compressing this gradient inside the shape of these trees. This is following a technique in Evolve called Vacant Shadows, where you only paint the areas touched by the light and leave the shadows completely alone. It's a great training exercise and also a very efficient technique for making simple yet elegant paintings, especially if you want to make art that appears realistic but doesn't quite look like a photograph. And here I am using a palette knife to just scrape out some branches and twigs. After I finished the trees, I began to paint the water, and I had to be really thoughtful about this section because the water is catching light and shadow as the sun is raking across it. So the light on the surface of the water needed a gradient, and the shadows from the waves needed their own gradient. This entire painting is basically gradients intermingling with each other in different shapes to look like one cohesive glow. But I also wanted to capture some of the glare that you get when you look at the sun. So I let there be lost edges that connected the waves to the trees, and I left these areas untouched, creating that obscured effect in our vision. My art teacher Kevin often reminds me that less is more. 
adding in details of the rocks, the bark of the trees, it would have taken away from the overall impact of the painting. And I intentionally didn't draw attention to anything else. A few soft touches and the waves and the rocks, but nothing that would distract from that moment when the sun catches your eye. Mara and Matt had a beautiful wedding. I have to say, it is so much fun to make a painting that's a surprise for someone, especially when your client is in on it with you. This was Matt's vision, and to be a part of it, to bring it into reality, it's just, oh, it's just one of the best things. And Mara was really touched to see the painting. The painting is now in their home, commemorating the joy and dedication that they have for each other a golden light that never fades. Now, I wanna explain this from a more technical perspective so that you can apply this to your own work. I had mapped out my color palette before I started painting and there's two criteria that I had to meet. First, the center of the glow has to be significantly brighter than anything else in the painting. The sun is a light source. Even if the clouds were white, they would still have to be made gray in relation to that sun. Otherwise, it won't feel like the sun is emanating any light. Secondly, the glow must be more colorful than anything else. Everything else has to be gray in comparison, right? If I put a bright red car in front of this painting, then the glow would look gray, which we don't want. It would start to reduce the impact that the sun is having on the environment. I often talk about how you can use value, edge, and color to guide the eyes on the journey that you want them to take. In this painting, I'm driving people towards the center where the trees become one with each other in the light of the sun. My values have the highest contrast here. My edges are sharpest here, and my colors are richest here. These three fundamentals are the key to painting light and I learned them from my art teacher, Kevin Murphy, who is the founder of the Evolve program. We have a playlist on these fundamentals you can watch on our channel, but if you really want to improve your skills, you've got to watch the free mini course that Kevin made. It's a lesson on using values and edges to create form and depth in your art. Everything I know about art came from this guy. So find the link in the description, subscribe to our channel, and let me know your thoughts in the comments. Until next time, happy painting everyone.